Coming now to section 5 where we will talk about pre-takeover defense mechanisms and post-takeover defense mechanisms. Let's first take a look at several pre-takeover defense mechanisms. So these are mechanisms that companies can put in place to deter acquirers from taking over the company. One pre-offer takeover defense is a poison pill and you have seen this at earlier levels but when there is a poison pill provision that allows the issuance of target company shares at substantial discounts and this makes it costly for the acquirer to take control and within poison pill there are two subcategories there is a flip in pill which says that the target shareholders have rights to buy shares at a deep discount but the acquirer does not have that right so what happens here is substantial dilution of shares which does not benefit the acquirer in fact it would hurt the acquirer the other is a flip over pill where target shareholders have a right to buy shares of the acquiring company at a significant discount so this will deter acquirers from taking over the target company another defense mechanism is a poison put here target bondholders have the right to sell or put the bond at a higher price so the idea is this this is the target company the target company has issued bonds which are held by bond holders and the poison put says that if an acquirer tries to take over this company then the bondholders can redeem their bonds at a certain price and typically that price will be larger than par so why would that deter a potential acquirer because for the potential acquirer the moment they start taking over this company they will have to come up with the cash to pay off the bondholders another very practical strategy is to incorporate in target friendly states as i mentioned this is a very us centric reading and in the US, states have their own rules and regulations related to companies. And it is generally perceived that Pennsylvania and Ohio are very target friendly in the sense that the rules and regulations in those states make it difficult for an acquirer to take over the company. You know, continuing with pre-takeover defense mechanisms staggered board of directors now this is interesting when you have a board of directors there needs to be an election so if you have nine members the question is whether the election should be annual or staggered annual means that all nine board members are up for election every year Staggered would mean something like this, that in a given year you have one, two and three up for election. In the next year you have four, five and six up for election. The case for having a staggered board is that you cannot change all the board at the same time. As an investor or as a company that wants to take over the acquirer, what you would like to be able to do is in one election replace the whole board but if you have this staggered system then that in a sense is a bit of a takeover mechanism because it will take two three years for you to get your own friendly board in place so just to make sure having a staggered board is a defense mechanism restricted voting rights in the corporate governance charter there might be a provision which says that if a given shareholder starts owning more than 15 percent of the company then that shareholder loses voting rights obviously that's an issue for investors but that is another defense mechanism super majority voting provision this provision if it is part of the corporate governance charter might say something like this that for a takeover to be approved 
a super majority of 80% of or more is needed fair price amendments now i would put fair price in quotes over here some corporate governance charters say that for a takeover to be successfully executed the price must be fair but then the question is what is a fair price and maybe the fair price is defined as the highest the stock price has been over the last three years that's just an example so if a company is currently priced at twenty dollars the highest price over the last three years has been 35 and the bid comes in at 23 what management will say is that look the price has been as high as 35 a current offer of 23 is not quote unquote fair so they say to the board that this should not be approved okay now clearly this is subjective because currently the value is only 20 but this fair price amendment can also serve as a defense mechanism golden parachutes this is a little debatable but i'll just explain what it is a golden parachute is where senior executives get handsome benefits when they are laid off because of a merger or acquisition moving now to post takeover defense mechanisms the simplest one is just say no and why is this a defense the point is that if you have an acquirer coming after a target and target says no then acquirer knows that they have to fight so the question is do they really want to fight another is litigation this is where the target files a lawsuit that if acquirer takes us over then there will be some antitrust issues or you know whatever the reason might be generally lawsuits do not necessarily work but they are a delaying tactic so file the lawsuit and then figure out what your strategy needs to be green mail this is a situation where you have a company that intends to acquire or wants to acquire and let's say that this company has already bought 10 percent of the shares in company t what the management of t then does is says to company a that look your shares in the market are worth 20 dollars actually pay you 25 dollars for these shares so the sh acquirer is being offered a premium it's almost like a bribe with the condition that the acquirer will then not try to acquire the company share repurchase if the acquirer wants to take over t what t can start doing is buying its own shares in the open market and if company t is buying at a relatively high price that might send the share price up so it will make it more expensive for company a to acquire a related item is this increased leverage or leveraged recapitalization the point here is that the target company might take on debt and use that debt to buy back shares so what is happening there a target company now has a higher level of debt which again might discourage the acquiring company so the reason you see increased leverage here is because the increased leverage could be used for share repurchase and then this leverage re recapitalization is a separate category if the level of debt being taken on is quite substantial so these items will discourage an acquirer crown jewel defense what happens here is if you have a target company with several businesses or several segments of which one or two segments are the star performers then in order to make itself less attractive when an acquirer comes over target company t just sells the most attractive parts of its business once these are sold then the acquirer will not be interested in t anymore pacman defense this is a little silly and based on a computer game from long ago where you have this little pacman that eats things up that are much bigger than itself so a pacman defense is where a large acquirer comes 
to acquire T and then T puts in an offer to buy A. This doesn't happen much in practice because if T makes a counter offer then effectively it is ruling out many other defense mechanisms. So if T makes an offer for A then it cannot file a lawsuit that there is any antitrust going on over here. White Knight defense. In this situation, again, acquirer trying to take over T. What T then tries to do is find another friendly party to take over T. T is trying to create a bidding war over here. If this friendly party, the White Knight, is putting in a bid and the acquirer is also trying to take over T, then the cost will increase substantially for A and that might discourage A. White squire is similar. A squire is just a smaller version of a knight. So here what T tries to do is find a friendly party to take a substantial minority stake and that might also discourage the acquirer.